Hey guys, today we're going over your questions on carbon fiber nylon or polyamide. This is going to be a good one. We had some videos where you guys left us a ton of comments. And we're going to go through the top comments and answer those questions and go over a couple different uh, tidbits of information uh, that should be clarified. Now, we're not talking about the Anisoprint or Mark Forge style carbon fiber nylon where they actually take carbon fiber toe and put it throughout the part. This is actually going to be the polyamide polymer with chopped carbon fibers throughout, which increases the rigidity, the overall stiffness, the thermal deflection temperature, as well as the dimensional accuracy. Really, really great parts. We've got guys making automotive parts, jigs, fixtures, welding fixtures, tooling, all kinds of stuff. It's really dynamic. So let's dive right in and answer your guys' questions. He's, you know, looking at his $200 Ender 3 like, well, okay, can this do this engineering grade awesome polymer? Actually, yeah, if you've upgraded the hot end to all metal and get the temperatures required, so I think the Ender 3, what does the Ender 3 max out at, uh, 260. Cole? 260? 260 because of PTFE. 260. So they max out at 260 stock because they got PTFE lining the hot end. That stuff starts breaking down around 240, 250, which means at 260 you're melting it, fumes are getting into the air, it's really bad stuff, and you're going to jam your hot end. So if you've upgraded to all metal like a Mosquito or a Micro Swiss or anything like that, Slice Engineering makes really great hot end upgrades for all the Creality machines and just about every other consumer machine out there. But if you've upgraded, you can print this material. Now, you're going to be limited on size because if you're trying to print a really big part on an open air printer, it's going to be cooling and warping and going all over the place, so you're going to have a lot of challenges. Now, if you have an enclosed chamber printer where it's keeping the ambient heat in, that helps a lot. And even better if you've got an actively heated chamber. If you want to do really big nylon parts, even CF nylon, you're going to want that active heating inside the chamber to keep it closer to its glass transition point so that it's soft and it doesn't warp while you're printing it. And then, you know, sometimes those printers can actually anneal the parts for you as a secondary process as well. Would love to see from VeloSet. Uh, would love to see a heated chamber versus no heated chamber comparison on the same printer and part in CF nylon. Hey, Cole, let's uh, potentially put that one on the books. Do a uh, CF nylon and an Ender 3 in the same part in something like the Fun Mat of one, or one of our machines to show the difference between having a heated chamber and not a heated chamber. Let it, leave a comment down below if you'd like to see that too. I think that's a pretty good one. That I can absolutely see. I see guys printing entire drones, FPV drones, out of nylon, just regular nylon. The Talman uh, 910, Allo 910 or something like that seems to be a pretty common favorite. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is something you can use a lot of places. Um, you know, whether it's a drone body or even I, I 3D printed a, um, an antenna mount for my FPV drone on the back. And I also printed a, well, I printed a, a GoPro session mount out of TPU for it numerous times now, actually. Uh, so yeah, 3D printed drones, really good. Cole, you got any input on the 3D printed drones topic? It's good enough for Glock, it's good enough for a drone. Amen. So we have been planning on actually doing a big shootout of all the different brands, the top known CF nylons, because that's actually a this is actually a pretty big topic. There's a lot of different carbon fiber nylons on the market. You got Carbon X, CF Nylon 6, CF Nylon 12, you've got Nylon X, you've got the 3D for Maker stuff, eSun, everybody and their mom is making carbon fiber filled nylon now. Definitely look into it. You know, a lot of our customers are more into the chemical resistance and the heat resistance of specific polymers infused with this stuff. So uh, we really tend to look at the engineering capacity of it as opposed to the general overall looks, which I think a lot of filament companies are really going for. I've used some nylons that print really easily, but they're not nearly as strong or as rigid as others, so that's always something to consider. One key element of all those different filaments is that if, if your print temperature is around 240 for nylon, you're printing mostly additives. You're not printing straight nylon a lot of the time. That's the same with PLA. You've got the PLAs from four or five years ago where it was print at 185 to 200 max. And now we're printing PLAs up to 230, even 240 on the HD PLAs. And there's 
the, I mean, hundreds of different blends and their HD and PLA Pro Plus and all these different things. Uh, what that is is really them going in, taking the virgin material and adding stuff to it to make it print easier, flow better, have higher temperature resistance, crystallize differently, all sorts of stuff like that. So a lot of the times you're buying nylon and it's nylon and these other things added to it or PLA and these other things added to it. So depending what you're doing, that might be fine. For a lot of people, it's gonna be fine. For a lot of people, it's not. And that's why we've got the highest quality filaments on our website at visionminer.com slash materials. Coming up from the corner, Amazon Basics is not equal to 3D X Tech. It's true. What's the best printer for 25 carbon? I think he's talking about HTN CF25, which is a 25% carbon fiber blend from Ascentium. And is there a higher strength carbon printer? I'm interested in buying one of the machines just for carbon fiber nylon. Basically, don't buy a machine that's advertised specifically for CF nylon. Get an open material, high temperature machine, because that's not only gonna have the heated chamber and the nozzle specs to do it, but the all metal hot end, and it's gonna be able to, it's gonna be able to handle any of the blend of carbon fiber nylon. So the HTNC of 25 prints as high as 320, 330 sometimes, depending how fast you're going. And if you have an open material high temp system, then if you want it, say it's not cutting it, you can upgrade to CF Ultim or CF Peak and still have that capability without always having to print in the super expensive material. So open system that's high temp is gonna be the best way to go. Check out visionminer.com for the best deals on high temp printers. That's all we've ever specialized in. Good question, how heat resistant is it? And it's very expensive. Different blends are all different costs. Very, very true. So we've got everything from CFPA6 to CFPA12 to CF HTN, and these all have about 15% carbon fiber in them. And then we've got the PAGF30, which is glass filled 30%, and the HTN CF25, which is the 25% carbon. Now the CF25 is by far the most rigid and also up there in the heat deflection range of CF HTN. So you're looking about 15% carbon to 25% carbon, and I'll show you the difference here. All right, that is the CF25, and this is the CF HTN. So that's significantly more deflection in the HTN, the less carbon fiber, less rigid. Compared to the 30% glass, is actually even more bendable than that. So you get totally different effects with carbon, the amounts of carbon, and comparing the carbon to glass, because carbon is much, much, much more rigid. Now glass is pretty cool too, but that's a topic for another video. Um, as far as the heat resistance goes, we literally have customers making intake manifolds for uh, V8, V6, V8? Superchargers. Oh, it was a supercharger for a V8 uh, out of carbon fiber nylon. High temp carbon fiber nylon. So HDN CF25, CF HDN, it's up in that almost 200 Celsius heat deflection range and it should do pretty good for you. Now, keep in mind CF PA6 is gonna have a little bit lower temperature deflection than the HTN, uh, but it's still up there around 150 Celsius, which is pretty darn hot, way more than you're getting from PLA, PETG, anything else like that. Something to consider. We've got Michael Hathaway. Thank you so much for his comment. Michael actually gave us a few tidbits. A couple things we forgot to mention is, firstly, CFPA, or nylon. Nylon is actually DuPont trade name, so it's, um, not actually called nylon, it's actually called polyamide. And basically they use different types of polyamides and different percentages to make their nylon. So PA12 uh, is really common, PA6 or 6 6 6 is another really common blend. Uh, and then we've got PPAs and other stuff and there's a lot of really interesting stuff. Go check out the comment if you wanna learn more. It gives a lot of really cool, um, really, really cool details about nylons. Now, one thing he also mentioned is you must use a hardened steel nozzle or similar, something that won't wear down and degrade as you print because carbon fiber is super abrasive and you'll get through about 200 grams before your 0.4 millimeter hole turns into a 0.8 and a 1.2 millimeter hole giving you nasty looking prints, lack of accuracy, just overall poor performance. So make sure you're using a hardened steel or similar nozzle. We also have those at visionminer.com in our accessories area. Great pricing too. 
Uh, now, fan cooling is another thing you mentioned, which is generally not used when printing nylon or other high temperature polymers. Now, if you're doing really small parts, you absolutely might want a little bit of cooling fan because it's just going to get too hot. The heat's going to transfer through the part and it'll turn into a, a blobbing ooze of polyamide. So some features you can and do want to use cooling, but for the majority of them, you do not. Dehydration is absolutely required on almost every nylon. Some are better than others, but it's hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs moisture from the air into the actual polymer structure, and that must be dried out before extrusion because you're passing it through a nozzle that's over the boiling temp of water, uh, which means it's going to turn any moisture into steam and create bubbles and pockets and things that you don't want in your 3D print. It's not only going to make it look bad, but it's going to decrease the performance mechanically as well. Now we mentioned something really good in here in that, uh, you know, 80 to 90 C as a dehydration temperature is higher than most food dehydrators. So to get it done really good, you got to go for 48 to 72 hours, sometimes even longer, but usually within that one to two day period at those temps. You can dry a little higher temp, it'll dry faster, or use our drying kit with a vacuum chamber. That really, really helps a lot. He also mentions that having metal aerated filament spools, such as those sold here at Vision Miner, at visionminer.com slash spools. We've got metal spools that we made that have tons of holes throughout them so you can get the heat into all the plastic. And then if it becomes dry, when it's dry, it gets a little more brittle. You also have tons of little areas to secure the end of the filament so when you're storing it, it doesn't just unwind and turn into a tangled mass. Last thank you for your video. He's an engineer and manufacturer who specializes in plastics and he's a customer and dude, thank you so much, Michael Hathaway, for informing the community and just giving some great information in the comments. All right, and we're going on 15 minutes, so I'm going to call this the last one for the moment. Could you please provide a link to the 25% carbon fill blend so I can get it correct? That will be visionminer.com slash HTNCF25. HTNCF25. You can find it right there along with a bunch of other materials. Uh, CF nylons, we've got a visionminer.com slash materials. Check them out. Definitely let us know uh, and let me know your questions down here and below. We're going to do more videos like this where we just go through and answer people's questions. That's what we're here to do. We're really here to inform you, educate you, help you discover the answers to the questions you have so you can buy the right equipment for your application at visionminer.com. Um, and sometimes we don't carry what you should buy and we'll let you know, but most of the time we've got something perfect and an entire system of products that can get you started from ground zero as well as the American based support right here at Vision Miner to get you going make sure you've got everything you need to 3d print and keep 3d printing anyway thanks so much for watching guys leave a comment down below and leave this video a like if you enjoy these have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video